So, like, what were some of your favorite games from, like, your earliest childhood? Also, like, when we were five to eight to ten, stuff like that. Um, I remember I was in kindergarten, and I would try and beat all the Mario games on my babysitter's, like, um, thing. And his brother got really mad and deleted all my saved games files because I was, like, eight or something. I was better than them at all his games, and he got really mad, so he kept deleting all my files. Yeah, it was fun, fun wow. times. Hello everyone, this is Various from the Shot Caller, joined here by Dylan, the coach of Fnatic, after a uh, interesting win against Giants Gaming, because there were parts where Giant looked pretty good, and uh, it didn't look as decisive as you'd expect it to be from the first place team against mm -hmm. Giants. Yeah, uh, I thought it was a pretty good game overall. I think there's just two or three mistakes that just dragged out the big game a bit, but we won in the way that our comp was planned to, so in that aspect I think it was pretty good. So let's talk about the, the, the big elephant in the room, that is uh, the return of yeah. Reckless, of course. Uh, what made you guys decide to, to bring him back in, and uh, are you happy with his first performance so far? Um, I'm really happy that uh, Reckless got to play again this week. Uh, I think we have such a strong six-man roster, it's really great we can actually utilize it. Um, a lot of teams were seeing success with AD carries, and we were getting to a lot of points playing with Beepo, where we felt like an AD carry was actually the optimal pick. So... At that point in time, uh, it became a pretty obvious decision to bring him in for more scrims than we were playing with him before. He's pretty much been around the team the entire time, and he's even split a lot of scrim time um, like er in the earlier weeks. So it wasn't for us, it wasn't a big change. It was just that he's playing on stage this week, and he got a couple more scrims, and the scrims went really, really well, and things are looking good playing with him for sure. Okay, so it's not even like that huge of a change. It's, even no. though the, the Fnatic channel, for example, uploaded the video yesterday announcing that he'd return, and yeah. he talked about you know visiting family back in yeah. Sweden, so it seemed like a very long break, maybe yeah. longer than it w actually was. Well, he, he was gone for, I think, about two weeks okay. from, from the team. Still so fair. it's still, still a decently long time, but the rest of the time he was with us and screaming and all of this. So I think for the public, because he hasn't played for so long, it comes across as a really big deal mm -hmm. for us. It's just another regular season LCS game. Um, but now we have a AD carry in, in Balling. Would you argue that Fnatic, uh, potentially without a doubt, has like the, the biggest or like kind of the best roster when it comes to variety and being able to switch out players and, and stuff like that? Yeah, of course. We're the only top Western team that has this ability on this level. Right. Yeah. However, for other teams, it, the roster swaps are trying to find who's the better player. But we actually have different lineups with different strengths and weaknesses that we can use. Is that kind of the future of esports that we're going to see like more deeper rosters with more variety so that you can actually change kind of the play style depending on how you play rather than just having a, a team and B team? So for sure, deeper rosters help um, to create better teams. This is just, just, just a fact, right? Like if somebody's underperforming or you just have more options to figure out who's better and find a cohesive five-man squad. I think in league, you don't need six or seven players, I think it is completely possible and fine if you find the right five players to play this roster through for the entire season and win, at least the way the game is right now. But yeah, have, having extra players does have advantages as well. Without a doubt, given yeah. the, the current situation of Fnatic. Now, I wanted to, to ask you some things about you personally. So yeah. I recently learned uh, that you lost uh, <laughs> in a <laughs> Connect 4 game to Caps, and that Caps was putting it down in the middle, and then yeah, you just yeah, put him yeah, above yeah, it, yeah. and then you lost on the fourth turn. Yeah, well, we've been playing a lot of Connect 4 recently. We play so many different board games and games uh, at Fnatic. And I don't even think my Connect 4 record is that bad. I think I'm undefeated going first in my past, like, okay. four or five games. Generally, the person who goes first seems to have a really big advantage in this game, so, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think if you go first, you have at least the ability to tie the game you if you force, play it perfectly. If you, if you look it up, you can force a win if you go in the middle with your first right. thing. Okay, okay and, anyways. <laughs> professional Connect yeah. 4, it's apparently a thing. Um, but more importantly, you used to be a professional poker player, I learned. Yeah. So what was that like, and how did you transition into League? Um, I played online poker professionally for a year, uh, two years, I, I believe it was. Um, I just, after I finished university, I always wanted to do something in gaming, and it was just a good way to sustain myself, and I really like competitive gaming. It's just, it, it's like competitive gaming, right? Yeah. But you can learn with math and statistics and become good. So yeah, I did that for a couple of years, and then um, on my own was trying to get into esports. This was like a long time ago, maybe like four, five, six, six years ago now. 
Okay, so yeah. like, what did you graduate in? Uh, I studied economics at okay. university. Yeah. So basically statistics and yeah, all that exactly. kind of stuff as well. So perfect for esports. Yeah, uh, and did you try to get into other esports as a player maybe? Or was it always like the coaching route, analyst route that you wanted to um, take? I was a high-low player in season one, season two, season three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like pretty high-low in NA, I guess. And then uh, my first job was working for TSM as an analyst full-time. And I worked with them for almost two years. It's... Um, yeah, that's right. just where I started. And then you got to join Immortals, I believe, yeah, and then Fnatic. Yeah, Immortals. Immortals, Envy, then Fnatic, yes. Right, Envy in between. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Very interesting uh, career so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making the, the jump to, to EU, was that a difficult step for to, to, to make? Um, moving to Berlin was fine. Uh, to me, whether you're in EU or NA, a lot of what you do is the same. You're still scrimming all day, every day. You're still working with gamers and trying to win games. I just want to work where the players are good. And in EU, my team is very, very good. So without a doubt. I, I, I like it here. Yeah. <laughs> very happy to hear that. Yeah. Now, uh, so you always wanted to get into games. So did you have like significant games that influenced your childhood or that you grew up with uh, that really impacted you? Um, I played a lot of the popular multiplayer games like Warcraft 3, Dota, WoW, um, Counter Strike. It's basically, everything multiplayer competitive. I just and always it. PC. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So no, no console. Oh, so a lot of console games as well. I just played like everything. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have like a Super Nintendo, a Nintendo 64, some PlayStation? Yeah, I mean, everything. Everything really? we've said, yes. Just like everything. Yeah, 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 of course. If you told people I knew growing up with that I would end up being a video game coach professionally. People would believe me, even though that wasn't a job back then. They'd be like, yeah, probably. He's just so yeah. much into video games. Yeah, of course. So, like, what were your, some of your favorite games from, like, your earliest childhood? Also, like, when we were 5 to 8 to 10, stuff like that. Um, I remember I was in kindergarten, and I would try and beat all the Mario games on my babysitter's, like, um, thing. And his brother got really mad and deleted all my saved games files because I was, like, eight or something. I was better than him at all his games, and he got really mad, so he kept deleting all my files, yeah. It was fun, fun wow. times. That is, yeah, that's yeah. always, uh, did you ever attempt, I, I, I'm not sure 100%, but, like, Nintendo World Championships ran for a few years? Yeah, I no, I have no idea about this, yeah. Because, okay. I mean, there used to be, like, those mm. old-school competitions. Yeah. Ah, good times. But, um, yeah, any Pokemon, any, like, RPGs, yeah. anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I like the Final Fantasy games. They're fun. Ooh, which one's your favorite? Uh... Eight, but I think it was because it was the first one I played, mm -hmm. and I, it's probably not the best, like from an outside perspective. But it's my favorite because it's the first one I played. Yeah. It's pretty popular. Quickshot has a Final Fantasy VIII tattoo, so oh, maybe you want to talk with him about that's that. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, would you ever get a video game related tattoo? Hmm? Would no, never. <laughs> no smoking, no tattoos for my parents. Oh. Yeah. So were your parents like rather strict when it came to those things, or just like no, no smoking, no, no tattoos, no please? No smoking, no tattoos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good rule set for sure. Um, okay, so the current situation in EU is that we have about five teams that are all yeah. good. Um, and a lot of people say, okay, Fnatic's at the top, but the rest of the four are all relatively uh, close. What are your thoughts on those remaining four teams and uh, especially going into Worlds? Even Splice. Okay, let's include Splice, yeah, so five teams. Splice should definitely be included. Um, I think it's really hard to tell. Uh, I think we're clearly the best right now. Um, and then I think past that, I think Misfits, even though they're second place, are towards the lower end of the spectrum. Like, they've been dropping a lot of games. Um, other than that, I think Vitality and Schalke are quite good. I think Vitality probably has higher highs, but Schalke's going to be a bit more consistent. And then G2 and Splice, I think, have just been playing worse in the past few weeks, but have enough roster strength that they could do well, too, for sure. And, I mean, G2 has points, Splice yeah, do, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be, it's I think, very favorite for a team like G2 to make it the world, even if they're like the third best team or something. And so are you a fan of predictions? Um, not so much, but yeah, I guess I, I will predict if I have to. So the three teams that go to Worlds from EU? Mm, Fnatic, G2, Vitality. Oh, okay. Yeah. Little curveball thrown in there. Sure. <laughs> At the end of an interview, yeah. I say uh, that the interviewee is allowed to create a hashtag for all the people that watched until now. Okay. Would you like to create a hashtag? Oh. Um, I'll give you some time to think about it yeah, while you give yeah, yeah, a very nice yeah, message yeah. to the fans and just say, yeah, thanks for the support and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just going to go with the thing we say after we win a game, hashtag fanatic fighting. Okay. It's an easy one. Very easy. Anything you want to say to the fans? No, thanks so much uh, for everything and 
hopefully support us and we can win the split. <laughs> very excited to see that. Very excited for playoffs. This was Dylan from Fnatic and Darius from The Shot Caller. I hope you had a good day. See you then. Hey everyone, this is Darius from The Shot Caller and I hope you just enjoyed that video. This is a generic end card of course, so make sure to click here for a different interview or here for a different interview or about here to subscribe to The Shot Caller. We very much appreciate your support and see you guys next time. Bye bye.